What up, good people? It's your boy D coming at you with another review. It's the first one of the year. Even though the movie came out last year, I had to go through a whole bunch to see this one. I had to get through a whole family flu type epidemic. The holidays were there. I had the time off, but I could not get my way to the movie theater or find my way to the movie theater to see this. But I finally got to go out and see Aquaman. And I'm going to let you all know off gate. Yes, I know he has gotten this rap of being this lame superhero because he can only talk to fish. But that's because of the stupid Super Friends cartoon from the 60s. Aquaman is one of my favorite, favorite superheroes. And Black Manta is probably my favorite villain. I didn't even know until about 2001 that Black Manta was really black. I just always loved the way his costume looked on like Justice League Unlimited and in the comic books and everything else and then I found out he's from Baltimore so he's become my favorite villain over the years and I was so glad to finally go get to see this movie there were some hiccups in it but we'll get to that later first off James Wan did a good job with the direction of uh, certain scenes there's a lot of CGI in this movie but it doesn't ever look too crazy the whole most of the movie is underwater so well, I guess we'll say about half of the movie is underwater. So you had to do a lot of good CGI to have it look like people are floating around, swimming. And he did a great job with this, seeing the sea animals, the technology of Atlantis and all the different um, tribes and kingdoms under underwater. And this is pretty much King Arthur of the Round Table underwater. But there's a little bit of Raiders of the Lost Ark and... A lot of other things in the movie that I enjoyed. I think that uh, Jason Momoa did great as Aquaman. This is not the Aquaman I grew up reading about, but they put a great spin on it and added a lot to the character. Uh, that I feel will go far with him to get that whole, oh, he's lame out of the way. It's like, oh no, this guy can actually do some stuff. He's pretty strong in the water. Pretty strong. He's uh, fast. Um, he's, he's, a, he's a superhero. He really is. Plus, he's also a king. So... There was a lot about this movie that I just straight up enjoyed. Uh, Amber Heard did really well as Mira. This is a lot of people's introduction to the character that is Aquaman's wife. They have a story history in the comic books, but this was a good introduction for her right here. Uh, she's, she's a strong character. She fights on her own. She does a lot for her for herself, which I liked about the character. He wasn't ever coming to have to save her. She was nine times, not nine times out of ten, but half of the time coming to save him. Um, it was a good introduction for Black Manta. I would have liked it to have been a little bit better. Uh, when, he, when he actually gets the suit on and becomes Manta, that first uh, realization that I'm Black Manta, that was pretty cool. But the fight just made him look like a bit of a, uh, a pushover near the end of it. So when the sequel comes out, because this movie did great, it did, it did so great in China, it's not even funny. But um, the movie's like been number one in the you know the whole whole world the last two weeks, so it's already grossed more money than uh, than Justice League did in its entire run in the movie theater. So it's up there. Um, now for the other side, the downside to this movie is unfortunately it's the too many cooks uh, with the one pot trying to think trying to everything. There's so much in the story of this character. That instead of just picking one story that's come out in the last couple of years and just driving right through it. As the Aquaman comic reader, they pick at least, at least five different Aquaman stories and give you little seeds over here and there. And instead of just, you know, focusing on one thing, it had it goes in a bunch of different directions. You get three different types of movies off gate. Uh it's an Aquaman origin movie. It's an Aquaman Return to Atlantis movie. It's a origin story for Black Man. It's the first time he meets the trench. It's it's a lot of stuff, a lot of good stories here that could have been movies on their own and would have made great movies if they tried to put it all in there. Maybe because of the way the DC Extended Universal Worlds of DC goes, they didn't know if they were going to get a chance to do a sequel. So they were like, let's appease everybody. Let's put Black Man in there for those fans. Let's do Ocean Master. Let's do the trench. This is three of Aquaman's biggest villains over the last 10 to 20 years. And they have all three in this movie. But that being said, Ocean Master was great in this movie. Uh, the costume design I was floored by. Like, it's probably the most accurate portrayal costume-wise of the characters we've seen in the comic. They didn't try to uh, downtone it. This is like an orange and green costume. Only he can pull this off. And they actually went with it and did with it. And Ocean Master's costume has a lot of purples in it. And you have a black costume with big old eyes that shoot laser beams out of them. It, so there was a lot of good about this movie, but the writing was atrocious. It, it just, This movie, it came out like, it's like 
reminded me of the comic book movies that came out in the early 2000s. A lot of shots of people just standing there and they walk in the room and in slow motion they turn their head and it it, it, it had a very late 90s, early 2000s vibe to it. Um, hopefully they'll get that, you know, worked out in the next one. The scenes that are the best are when there are monsters involved because this is, that's James Wan's wheelhouse. He is one of the, you know, horror masters right now. So this is one of his first non-horror movies to come out and he's a master of those type of scenes. But some of the other stuff, the writing could have been done a lot better. Uh, some of the way the air characters acted, like they didn't know if they wanted to be serious or goofy because I guess they're going back and forth between this ultra realistic and trying to be more like Marvel type thing. But like I said, when the pre uh, trailer came out, it's a step in the right direction. If you are a Aquaman fan, definitely go see this movie. Definitely see it in IMAX. You'll need to because the screen is just big and it just looks beautiful. So definitely go out and see it in the theater if you are. If you aren't a Aquaman fan and you haven't been a fan of the DC movies, you will be perfectly fine waiting for this one to come on video. It pains me to say that. I wanted this movie to be so bad to say, yes, run out and go see it, buy it, everything else. No, this is a perfect rent. Wait for it to come on Netflix or if you got DC Universe when it drops on that. This is something you don't have to rush and see, unfortunately. I'm going to have to give it a 7, uh, low 7 out of 10 on this one. It's, 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 it's worth the watch. It's just not like you won't be floored by it, but the action scenes are great. The CGI is great. The special effects are great. Costume design. Everything else helps the fact that the plot is a little all over the place and the writing is a little uh, is a little hokey at times. And this is from, from a comic book standpoint, I'm calling it hokey. Um, other than that, definitely go check out the movie. Um, I guess next up I'll be seeing maybe Escape Room. A lot's not coming out in January, so I don't know. If you got any suggestions, I'll leave a comment below. That'll do it for me. I'll see you all at the movies. Here's hoping it's a good one.